Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. Today is a very special day because my friend Jim McNair is here. Hey, Jim, good tell to see you. Oh yeah, you as well. Tell us what you do. I work for Kershaw Knives, and I I do the design. Well, I do some of the design. Can't take all the credit. You some so you're but you you lead the design team, right? I do, which means I do less and less design every year. But that means more and more awesome stuff comes out every year. And you have an insider's look at it. You know what's going on behind the scenes, and we want to hear about it. Okay. So last year, sort of the bell of the ball was the new live wire, at least when we did this video. I'll tell you, the bell of the ball last year in terms of sales was Iridium. But we have both of those on the table. So tell me about these new live wires. Well, you know, when people like things, we like to give more of it, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we have two new live wires, and we have one that's kind of shiny and one that's kind of dark. So, which one do you want to start with? Um, let's start with Mr. Shiny here. Okay, okay. Here, I'll give you a good look at that thing. So this here is the live wire carbon fiber, um, and it's it's got a magna cut blade. Um, we've moved it to this new two-tone finish, which is one of my favorites with that nice satin finish. Mm -hmm. It gives the blade a real sparkle. Almost glows. Yeah, it's like those vampires in the Stephanie Meyer books. It just sparkles in the sun. <laughs> Beautiful. This is the skin of a killer bone. <laughs> um, but it's got a carbon fiber front handle, which solid carbon fiber piece, just really a beautiful addition to that knife. Yeah, I love that carbon fiber and satin combo. I don't know if I like carbon fiber and satin or carbon fiber and DLC more, but those are both really good matches. Hey, it's, it's, a, it's a hard choice. One but, day one day we should have a DLC code and then you can have both. Ooh, that would be nice. That would be nice. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but it's, it's, uh, it's got that same great action, um, nice and easy to open. Hmm. But still snaps open with authority, which is our which is our thing with the with the live wire series. Yeah, um, man, you guys knocked this out of the park. So you're telling me off camera just a minute ago that this was a true collaboration. Like, it was, yeah. Like, tell me the story of how you and Matt Diskin and the rest of your team came together to build the live wire. Well, I mean, we, when we came together, we we said, you know, we really want to we want to do an OTF, and we'd never done one before. Mm -hmm. And anyone who's worked on an OTF knows that that's a it's the sum of many small things. And so we, we went to Matt Diskin because he's a good friend and he's been someone we've worked with over the years and he's kind of a master of automatics. He does all these double actions and all kinds of fancy mechanisms. So we had him come and help us out. Well, that's, that's awesome. And that, that's one thing I love about Kershaw is you have a lot of really great in-house designers, but you also involve a lot of external people who are really, really good. And that is why I think the live wire is so popular. By the way, I grabbed the other live wire. We can talk about yeah. it for a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, so this is so this is the other one. This is, and you, you mentioned DLC. This will be our, this will be the one with the DLC blade. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the live wire double edge. And of course, you know, you, if you're gonna have an OTF, you have to have a double edge. The dagger just kinda, just, they just go together. It's peanut butter and jelly. Mm -hmm. But, um, No again, risk of cutting yourself. <laughs> You know, that's the funny thing about OTFs, though, is they're actually pretty safe to carry. Yeah. Because of the way they work, as long as you don't lay your hand over the top, if you can avoid doing that one thing, the, spring, <laughs> the spring's not under any load. So when you carry this, you're never loading the spring until you open it. All that, you feel that that's when the spring is under tension. So right now, this is really safe. So my favorite thing about the double action OTF that the single actions don't afford you is that everything inside is truly at rest. Kind of like we were talking about. Yeah. You pull this apart, you pull the scale off and nothing wants to fly. There's no charged spring. Yeah. There's nothing scary about it. It's just yeah. a thing. But then you charge that spring, knife. Yeah, and <laughs> even, our, even our, our spring and our slider mechanism is, is all captured. So that thing comes out as a cartridge. So really it is, if you do get gunk in it, you know, you, you want you, you know, cut your hamburger or something, like we don't necessarily recommend. But if you do, <laughs> you can take it apart and clean it fairly easily. It's really not. And if you have, even, even if you want to just blow it out, you can take the two clip screws out and you can blow right through the, the handle cavity. So it's, I think that's a genius feature. Just go to your local big box, grab whatever canned air, if you have an air compressor, and just ding, and then spray dust at your kids and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, so we, but we have the, uh, the new carbon fiber and the double edge. Um, and so these ones were, were not totally set on MSRPs, but we're gonna be approximately 450 for the carbon fiber and we're going to be approximately 400 for the for the double edge. It's a couple bucks more for the DLC finish and the oh, if we sharpen it twice. Yeah. <laughs> so, I do think it's worth mentioning that this the prices we have here are MSRP. However, the price that you'll see at Blade HQ, the retail street price will be lower, but this is what Kershaw will be selling it on their website for. So, bear that in mind. 
But with that, let's move forward to some of these new, I, I personally think this is right here in Kershaw's wheelhouse. Like you throw yeah. a fastball, like, hey, we need a budget-friendly assisted opening knife, and Kershaw's like, all right, give it to me right in the middle. And yeah. You got it. Yeah, Out these, of the these, park these are kind time. of a slow pitch for us. Yeah, these are <laughs> these are kind of what we do. So next up, let's look at the let's look at the the wharf. So the wharf is going to be really affordable mm -hmm. um, EDC knife. It's it's got that kind of cleaver blade, but it's got a little more of a sloping forehead on this one. A little bit of a different look. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to have a $44.99 MSRP, so really quite affordable. And again, it'll be cheaper than that at market. Yeah. Um, nice texture on these scales. It's something different we've been doing with that sort of, that kind of orange peel texture. Yeah. Um, oh. Grippy, but not overly so. Not going to shred your pocket, but it will hold on to your hand. That's, that's a weird happy medium to find, right? Where you, yep. you want to get that where it's not completely destroying your jeans and you look like you're in an 80s metal band by the end of the day, but <laughs> at the same time, you don't drop it when your hands are wet or when they're slippery. Yeah, and I'm looking at the grind on this. This is a very deep, hollow grind. I'm it just is. imagining this thing will slice like nobody's business. Can you see business. how thin that edge is? Yeah, no, it, that's, Incredible. that's probably the best thing about the wharf. So anyway, yeah, so that's, that, that's the wharf. Um, assisted opening, um, we've got these gray um, glass-filled nylon scales. Deep carry pocket clip that's reversible. Yeah, I'm looking at the entire lineup. I don't think I see a not deep carry pocket clip on any of the Kershaws yeah. this year. We, we've kind of gone back and forth on that a little bit. We had a couple years where we were doing non-deep carry, but people really seem to like having them slip deeper into their pocket, and so most of what we do now has a deep carry clip. Yeah, plus the recessed screws in the clip, I'm gonna have to capture this in B-roll, but you can see the screws are perfectly flat against the clip, so it's gonna be much easier in and out of the pocket. Too. I'm glad you noticed that, because that's kind of a thing that we felt a little silly that we hadn't started doing sooner. You know, I guess we can be honest about that. <laughs> um, yeah, a very nice knife indeed, especially at that price point. Under $50 MSRP, dang. Yeah. And with, a re with those re recessed screws, even if you're wearing Carhartts or something like that, it's easy to carry. You got just enough room under that clip. Yep. The next up, this is that's the, that's the scour. The scour. Yep. So the scour is a, a little more of a traditional drop point shape. Nice, comfortable sweeping handle. Um, steel construction. You can see how thin that is. So it's it's a full size knife. I mean, I've got fairly big hands, but it fills my hand up. But it's slim, so it's easy to carry in the pocket. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I get the feeling that you had a pretty heavy hand in designing this one. <laughs> I didn't really. That actually wasn't one of mine, but okay. that one, I, I, I really believe in the concept. It's just a comfortable, easy, yeah. good working knife. Uh, I, uh, you mentioned that it's slim, but it fills the hand, and that is a very difficult balance for a knife to strike. So, yeah. I mean, well done, team. Very nice indeed, and then a nice assisted action. I love—I personally love this blade. I think of all the assisteds that we have right here in this sort of budget-friendly zone, I think this one's my favorite because of this blade. You get a very deep, slicey belly, but then a nice section of straight too. So if you're like push cutting through ropes or something, yeah. you'll do great, but then you're skinning a rabbit or slicing an apple or whatever, you're gonna use that belly and it's gonna yeah. be delightful. It's funny, this isn't necessarily what I would go to typically as a skinning knife, but it does have that nice big belly, so as you're pulling back the hide and you're just kind of working that motion to just mm -hmm. remove it, separate it, it's actually a good shape for that. Yeah, and then the steel, you can make it so thin because the steel is so strong. Yeah. So, I like this one. What's the, what are these going for? Let's see, MSRP on that one will be $62.99. Another fun thing, if you know, if you like to, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of customers like to personalize them or laser cool things on them or you know, maybe they put a hot dog on it. <laughs> um, so this, this is a big wide space, lots of room for activities. Yeah, um, I wonder if, I, I remember at Blade Show there was some booth where they were letting people try out their engraver and everything. Really? Yeah, so if you're That's brave. if you're an aspiring engraver, yeah, and you wanna go get one of those devices, I think this is a perfect canvas to learn on. You yeah. can make some really sweet customs for yourself and other people that'll just tickle them pink and dazzle them until next year starts and all that. Yeah. A great way to do Christmas, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so next up we have the Sanctum. Sanctum is kind of a, a bit of a familiar shape for us, but it's, it's one that I think is very functional. So we have this, this low tip blade that, for me, I personally, this is one that I did have a hand in, in case, mm -hmm. you know, it's not super obvious. <laughs> um, but I love that low tip blade style. For a lot of things you do, um, either, I always say opening boxes, but we do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Opening boxes, opening letters. Um, a lot of times I'll be cutting something out on a cutting board or on a table and just 
you have all that control. Almost cut myself on video, that would have been fun. I've done it a time or two. They'll forgive guess, you. Got a thick, got a thick <laughs> skin. But just it, it's just really good for those kind of controlled cuts and things like that. You can choke up on it easily. It's comfortable. Again, nice and slim, good EDC size. Little lanyard loop that comes out of the backspacer. Yeah, that's interesting. So the backspacer is like a fully captured piece that enters the lanyard loop here. I, I'm a guy who likes to tie a lot of knots. So when I put a lanyard on my knife, in fact, I very seldom do put lanyards on my knives yeah. because of this, is because I want to tie my cool chain knots, whatever, stuff that yeah. takes a lot of work yeah. that often involves a bead or whatever. And it's not something I want to untie when I need to take apart my knife. But you're like... Could we call you a naughty boy? The naughtiest. <laughs> Dad jokes that kill me every time. <laughs> they're, they're gonna cut that one out. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, but you just pop these three screws out and then you take the knife apart and your lanyard hole is still contained. So you can do whatever cool lanyard you wanna do on this here sanctum. You can turn the sanctum into your sanctum sanctorum and it'll just come out nicely when you disassemble, clean oil, put it back together and your sick lanyard is still tied, ready to go. I like that a lot. <laughs> oh. Yep, and then what looks like the, I, I guess I was going to say it looks like the Sanctum Large. I think the only thing that's similar well, about it is Well, I was going to say, did we talk about price on the Sanctum oh, yet? talk about the price on the Sanctum. Sanctum will be $59.99. So again, real, real reasonably priced, good EDC. Yeah. Man, look at all these chamfered edges too. Look at that. That's going to be nice and con like contoured in the hand, no hot spots. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop raving about the Sanctum. <laughs> So next up, we have the we have one called the heel attack. I'm sorry, the heel attack. There we go. So I don't have to mush my mouth there. Heel attack. Yeah. Okay. So my fourth grade teacher was a hot shot by summer. You might want to explain that to the viewers. So that means he's one of the hardcore firefighters who gets to actually fight the fire rather than just prevent it. They're the ones who carry the. So so wildland firefighter. Yeah, wildland fire. They're are they going on helicopters or do they parachute or? Oh, uh, I mean the smoke jumpers parachute, so, the helicopters, yeah, they're the heel attack, Same right? I'm showing my ignorance. <laughs> heel attack, yes, okay. Yeah, by the way, if you want to learn about wildland firefighting, go watch a movie called Only the Brave. You'll cry, I promise. <laughs> but the heel attack, I would assume, is inspired based on wildland firefighters who fly in helicopters. Um, the name definitely comes for that, and it would, you know, I could see it being used in some of those roles, but this is, again, a little bit larger, you know, Easy carry, fairly slim, steel handles, uh, and has the full gray PVD finish, which I think we did mention. A couple of these, like this one over here, have the the gray PVD finish on the handles. And this oh, that's be a, a PVD? It is, yep. So this one has a black wash blade, the Sanctum, and then that one is a full gray PVD finish. Okay, so yep, for so those of you nice out there and tough. who aren't familiar with PVD, it's physical vapor deposition and my understanding, tell me if I'm wrong here, yeah. is they take the part, they put it in a vacuum chamber, and then they evaporate metals that then condense onto the blade and then form these incredibly hard and high wear resistant finishes. You seem to know a little more technically about it than I do. It is, it is an electrically charged finish that they apply. I don't entirely understand the process, but it is, one, it is, a, it is a great finish. It's very tough. It doesn't scuff easily. A lot of times the scuff that you see is the PVD wearing away whatever it is you were cutting. So yeah, it's a great finish. But um, like, so I'm looking at the paper here. The heel yeah. attack's going for $64.99 MSRP yep. and you're getting a full PVD finish on that. Yeah, absolutely. I will not name names, but there are knife makers out there who would upcharge you 65 bucks just for that finish on their knife. Yeah, it can be expensive. <laughs> it can, but, but I, um, I love it. So the heel attack, <laughs> this quickly feature set. Um, Steel handles, assisted opening, and I, I apologize, all of these last four have been assisted opening. So the wharf, the scour, the sanctum, and the helitech, these are all assisted. Nice snappy assist as well, I might add. But we focused also very hard on making sure that that is an easy, comfortable assist. So they're nice and easy to open. Um, nice drop point blade, reversible deep carry pocket clip, and this one also does have an integrated lock bar stop, mm -hmm. which is nice if you're dumb like me and you press too hard on it. <laughs> I shouldn't say dumb. If you, we, we've all made mistakes. Yeah, we've all ruined the detent on our no. frame lock a time or two. No, you guys made the mistake of having me on your show today. <laughs> We're all learning. What are you here. talking about, Jim? I love having you on. 
So, so yeah, I'm gonna the heal attack. $64.99, comes in gray. There you go. Right. So I'd like to theorize a little as to how this okay. is perfect for the modern day wildland firefighter. Okay. The full PVD coat provides a very nice thermal barrier, so you're not gonna jack up your heat treat when you're doing something dumb. It's got an, by do, doing something dumb, I mean like, prying a deer out of a fallen burning tree, that sort of thing. Um, then the extra large handle is going to be nice for wearing gloves. Same thing with that extra large flipper tab. So it's going to be nice. The assisted action will run dependably. You don't have any washers or anything that are going to melt in the fire. And then the deep carry pocket clip is going to hang into your pants or wherever you're going to carry it because I know you're carrying a lot of gear out there. This is the perfect tool for the modern day wildland firefighter. Wow. And also, if you lose it in the fire, you can just get another one for 65 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you should get one if you love fight fires in the wilderness. Tell me about the launch 19. Yep, launch 19. <laughs> We're getting up there in those numbers. Yeah. We'll start doing Roman numerals or something. Yeah, don't, 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 don't be like the Super Bowl. Nobody likes that. <laughs> the launch XXXL. <laughs> um, I think that was a movie. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is the launch 19. Um, here we go. So Maybe everybody can see it now. Correct me if I'm wrong, this looks like a very similar handle pattern to the Launch 14. It does, it does. When we first did the Launch 14, you know, that has, has more of that cleaver style blade. Mm -hmm. And we really like the handle style, so we made sure that that, that that handle style would fit a couple different blade shapes in it. And so we finally got around to putting a, a different blade in that, in that, what we called the original Launch 14. So this is now the Launch 19. So we have, instead of a gray finish, we have a black anodized finish, a smooth G10, so smooth olive green G10. Um, this is a CPM S35, I'm sorry, CPM 154 blade, mm -hmm. this one. That's, that seems to be the go-to for the most of the launch series. We've been trying to, we've been trying to change it up. We've had some in Magna yeah, Cut. We've M4, done some. That launch um, 16, the green S, one. S35 VN. So we're trying to spread it out a little bit more. But this is kind of true to our basics with CPM 154. Great steel. And this great two-tone finish. I don't, know if I'm picturing, I don't know if I'm picking up the reflectivity on the camera or not, but. We can definitely grab it in B-roll if needs to. But yeah, that's, again, I love that satin finish. It just sparkles really nicely and it offsets the darker colors of the handle with the black and the olive green. Um, snappy, powerful action, just like all of our launch series. Mm. They always have to have that snap. But again, it has that snap without bouncing back. Yep, so we really just... try to balance that so it locks up every time nicely. Yeah, so I looked at this blade shape and I almost thought hunting knife when I saw it. Because you get a, a good amount of belly there, a very precise point. It was just skin, Ooh, it was no close. blood. It was, it was close. close. A very precise point, one of the sharpest are, points I've held. We are flying too too close to the sun today. Flying way too close indeed. Yeah, but I, I, I saw this and I thought, are there other automatic hunting knives? And the only one I can think of is the Buck 110 Auto. Ooh. which is a great knife, but it's definitely one of the old school hunting knives. Yeah. But there's old school hunting knives and then there's new school hunting knives. Yeah. Both are great. Some people prefer one, some people prefer the other. But I think this is the first new school automatic hunting knife I've seen. If you want to use it as a hunting knife, I think it'd be a great EDC knife too. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, you know, even, it's funny, even like our, our hunting knives, our fixed blades, I consider them to have a little bit of crossover appeal. Like you could just carry that as an outdoors knife. And I think the same here. If you wanted to skin a deer with this, you could, but you could just as easily carry this as an everyday, as an everyday knife. So, yeah. well, I think it's really great. It's one of my favorite launches you've made. Yeah, so, so. this one has an MSRP of two seventy nine ninety nine, mm -hmm. but again, that will be a lot cheaper at street price. So, okay. don't get don't get too worried about those numbers. <laughs> yeah, and then next up, I see what looks like a new iridium. It is. So, this is the iridium reverse Tonto. And the, the Iridium has been a super popular piece for us. A lot of people have thousands really responded well to it. Tens of thousands of them. <laughs> so we appreciate that. And so again, you know, when people like something, we try to give them more. Yeah. So, well, thank you. Yeah. We like this very much. So this is the, the reverse Tonto version of the Iridium. This time yeah. around, we have a stonewashed blade, um, black handles instead of gray. And I really like that cool silver backspacer. It is an aluminum backspacer, so it's a nice piece on there. And it just kind of mm -hmm. pops against the black handle. So this is kind of a tuxedo knife, really. I mean, when you look at it. Yeah, the reverse Tanto. I, 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 I will say, usually reverse Tantos aren't quite my jam because that gives me a very straight edge. Yeah. But this one has just enough belly in it that like it, it, it feels like it wants to pull rather than just push. Yeah. So 
I, I appreciate what you've what you and the team have done here with that edge yeah. and the reverse tantail. Well done. But again, you know, as I as I can, you know, sit here and talk about how much I love low tips on knives. It's the same thing where, you know, it has that low tip that's really good for cutting boxes, working on a tabletop. I mean, even if you were cutting food, this would be really nice for cutting up an apple or something small. If you were camping. So really useful blade shape. Smooth, easy action, nice release. Um, very, very fidget friendly. So yeah, we, we really love the Iridium and so that's the that's the new version. Well, I hope you all are excited because I know how excited you were for the Iridium last year. So if you wanted a new blade shape, maybe some new colors, here you go. Yep. And then MSRP of $99.99. So for a Benjamin, you can have this. Not bad at all. A Benjamin. A Benjamin. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it'll be less than a Benjamin. You'll have a, you might get a Franklin back. Yeah. So. Maybe a Jackson, we'll see. Maybe a Jackson. That's the thing, like, I always call 100 a Benjamin, but then I call the 20 a Jackson. Should I call it an Andrew? Ooh. Well, this was designed by an Andrew. He might appreciate that. It's an Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then next up, this one, this one I feel is right. Like, like I, I was, I knew something like this was gonna come. I was holding this one earlier, and this is a flipper from Kershaw. It's the Duralock, but it's assisted. It is, it is. It's, it's like Kershaw might be known for a few things, you know. <laughs> no, really, I mean, we are we are kind of known for doing flippers. That's one thing we do a lot of. And there aren't a lot of, of crossbar lock flippers out there, really. Because they are kind of hard to do, I'll admit, like, having worked on a few now, you, <laughs> it's tough to get them right. Um, There's a pretty big pocket you have to mill here to get that flipper to pass by the bar. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. But the thing of it is, there's another thing that Kershaw is really known for, and that is his assisted opening. Mm -hmm. And again, it's like we've always tried to explain to people, assisted opening is the automatic transmission of knives. Mm -hmm. It makes it so you never have to feel stupid, you never open your knife and you go, oh, I only flipped it part way. Anyone can do it, and anyone can do it consistently. Mm -hmm. Or even if you're in a situation, it's funny you're talking about, you know, in a, in a firefighter situation, being under duress, you're working hard, you may have a glove on, that little bit of assist can be a good thing. It's not just a novice feature. Mm -hmm. So again, it's a little different because it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily walk and talk the same way that a crossbar lock typically does. But once you get used to it, it's pretty easy, even if you want to fidget with it, you can, you just pull it with the two fingers and a little snap. But really what this is, is this is a this is a crossbar lock that's really easy for anybody. It opens, it closes, and a big thing, especially for me now that I have three kids and I'm terrified of <laughs> having them get cut and learning how to use a knife, this is a really safe mechanism because your fingers are never in the path of the blade. So you have the assist to help you make sure it opens every time consistently, and that crossbar lock allows you to close it and never have to have your fingers in that path. So the layup is actually really good for a lot of things. It just takes a minute to kind of think it through. Yeah. Well, I think it's great. And I, th I think its price is gonna be pretty nice too, yeah? Yeah, yep. So the layup is gonna be an $84.99 MSRP. Again, a little bit cheaper when we get out there. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how many Andrews or Benjamins or whatever <laughs> it is you get back from that original MSRP. But mm -hmm. deep carry clip, again, that, that kind of Orange peel texture on the handles. Yeah. Just te just just grippy enough. Mm -hmm. So again, safety features. You know, we talk about a knife that you're not going to slip with. You're not going to drop it. Yep. And then another thing I like is, like you're saying, that the assisted open is something for a lot of, perhaps not the hardest core of knife people, because if, if what you're telling me is Kershaw knows well how many hundred thousand million people out there just love a spring assisted knife. Yeah. And maybe they're not the same ones who are in the market for a live wire, but they are. there are a lot of them. And I think this is gonna serve a lot of them well. And to that end, I think holding this as a completely open flow through construction here with just these minimal yeah. standoffs, yeah. like you could just blow the dust out. Like yeah. no disassembly required. And there's no finger grooves, so it fits pretty much anybody's hand. Yeah. Just a very well done knife at a very well done price, if I may say. Okay. And then lastly, we, we have, have one, one more. Yeah, and my understanding is this one's USA made. This is, this is. So this is our first USA made Duralock. So this is the Bel Air. 
So we're getting a little 1950s Chevy vibe on that one. Mm -hmm. But the Bel Air. I was thinking Will Smith vibes. Oh, oh, it's the Fresh Prince. The it's Fresh the, it's, Prince. It's the Fresh, you know, Fresh Prince of Tualatin and just doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? <laughs> no. Oh, man. Well, okay, so I guess we'll have to make one looks like a cab or something then. I was thinking something like a people... slap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, unlike Will Smith, the, uh, the Bel Air is new, for, new to Kershaw this year. <laughs> We've known about Will Smith for a long time. Yeah, um, the Kershaw. Yeah, for this, but this is new to us this year. This is our very first USA made uh, Duralock. <laughs> so it has, a, it has a real thin, I don't know if you can catch it on camera, it's a 90 thou blade, so it's real thin and slicey. It is a full width flat grind. Thumb studs instead of a flipper on this one, which again, just for this mechanism, it just lends itself to it. Um, full aluminum handles with, with what we're calling a nickel finish. It's kind of a champagne color, kind of that not quite silver, not quite gold. Yeah, but, right. but that really is what nickel silver looks like, though. If you ever see like a, a guitar or something with a nickel finish on it, yeah. um, so that kind of that cool nickel color, black washed blade, uh, just easy smooth action. It's running on bearing washers. Just Look at makes that. It just super easy. That is how all crossbar locks will feel in heaven. My goodness, is that smooth. Well, I'm a little older than you, so I'll get there first. I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. If they don't, I'm not going. <laughs> yeah. So, so, anyway. Like an effortless action. It detains nicely, but then it just sneak. Yep, yep. And again, kind of that low tip blade, but it has a little bit of curvature. So, you know, we, we, can, we can both agree on this one. We're not going to argue yeah. because it's got the low tip for me, and it's got that bit of belly for you. See, yeah, and it brings the, the, the Bel Air brings people together. <laughs> Boy, it does. <laughs> yep. Um, no, but really, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great little knife. It's lightweight, aluminum scales, magna cut blade. I forgot to mention that. It is a magna cut blade on this, so we have a nice, great blade steel on it. Mm -hmm. um, standoff construction, and you know, it's hard to see in here, but these are, these are kind of a brown finish, along with, your, along with your crossbar studs there as well. Oh, I didn't even so know it's, it's a it's a it's a nice brown coat. Yeah. really a deep bronze is what it is. Yeah. So there's something I want to bring attention to that you mentioned. You said that the blade yeah. is ninety thou thick. So for us non scientists, what is a thou? Oh, I'm sorry. It is. It's a little thinner. So I mean, typically like an eighth inch would be 0.125. Yeah. So, uh, Ninety would be 0 0.09. I'm just saying it's a little thinner than kind of a standard. Yeah. You know, it's it's just like, something that makes this really slicey with a delicate point and edge. Yeah, well the unit of a thou is a thousandth of an inch, Thousandth right? of an inch, yep. So this is the first time I've seen a blade described in that unit, a thou. Oh, <laughs> I, you're, you're hearing, I guess, some engineering speak there. Yes, but I think that's worth mentioning is this is an incredibly thin knife. Like you said, it's, th it's thin, but like hold it in your hand and you'll be like, my goodness, how is it so thin? And I'm like, I almost be afraid of breaking it, but then you say magna cut. And I think that Magna Cut is a perfect use here. I think that is sort of a superpower you can give your knife to give it such incredible thin slicing capability, yeah. but without sacrificing the toughness that you need to survive. Yeah. Yeah, no, these, I think these are gonna be do, do really well. It's just comfortable, easy design, very useful blade shape, simple, clean handles. And MSRP on this is $249, but again, I just have to encourage everybody to remember, this will be quite a bit cheaper at the street price, so. Well, I'm excited to Hopefully see it. Hopefully you'll save a couple of Benjamins at least on the street <laughs> price, if not Hopefully. maybe three or so. Yeah, so. but man, that is a Oh, Benjamins, I'm sorry, wait, wait, Andrews. We're calling him Andrews now, Andrews, right? yes, maybe Andrews. Three, if you save three Benjamins, you'd be, we'd, we'd be giving you money to buy the knife, which, you know, everyone would love. But yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> let's say you save a couple of, couple of couple Jacksons of on this one, Jacksons. hopefully off of the MSRP. <laughs> These, the kids are gonna be like, what are these old men talking about? Because I'm not even old, <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> My mom was 43 when I was born, so maybe all I've ever had in life is old people. <laughs> all right. Well, Jim, yeah. thank you so much for yeah. joining us. This is a very exciting lineup. Yeah. I'll tell you, my shopping list includes the the dagger, the the heel attack, and the Bel Air. That's, all right. Those are the ones I'm going for. Fantastic. I, I'm torn. I'm I'm somewhere between somewhere between this and. Maybe, maybe the carbon fiber, because it's just, I like shiny things. That one's also I'm, noticeably I'm, I'm lighter, I'm easily too. distracted by shiny things, so, <laughs> yeah. And my goodness, is that thing shiny. Yeah, just sparkly. Sparkle. All right, 
Thanks everybody for coming. You can find all of these Kershaw knives and more at bladehq.com. And from what I've heard, there may be a few more releases of Kershaw throughout the year. Yep. So keep your eyes peeled on that new arrivals page and you'll see some of the greatest new stuff in the entire world appearing at bladehq.com. Jim, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Ha, ha, ha.